There we go. Okay. All right, well, let's get started, everybody. Um, welcome again. My name is Monica Olson. I'm the policy associate here at the State Board for Accessibility. This is the September 2022 edition of the CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum. Thank you everyone who is making their way in and attending this with us. We have some exciting announcements to share with you here in a bit. And before I hand it over to my colleague, Chris Thorne, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, <clears throat> number one, we are recording this meeting and I do work to get these recordings captioned and posted on the CTC Link Accessibility webpage. Please know I am a little behind in that posting work, but plan to get caught up soon. Uh, the second thing I'd like everyone to know is we do have a live captioner here with us today providing that service. So if you would like to follow along on your screen and see live captioning, please uh, you access that by either hitting the CC closed caption button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you don't see that, then you're gonna look for the three dot ellipses. You're gonna hit that button and you're going to select uh, show transcript or show subtitle. And then they should appear on your screen. The other thing I'd like to make sure everyone is aware of is that we welcome collaborative back and forth conversation at these meetings. If you have a comment or question, please go ahead and you can raise your virtual hand you can unmute your mic and um, you know, state your name if that's more accessible to you and we'll do our best to give you the floor. If you're more comfortable in asking a question in chat, please go ahead and do that as well. Chris and I do our best to monitor chat while we're also presenting and, and moving this conversation forward. So if we miss you, uh, keep, just put your, put your question back in there <laughs> and we'll, we'll get to it eventually. I think that's it for me right now for uh, welcome and housekeeping. So without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. I'm Christopher Soren, the Application Support Manager. Welcome to our monthly open forum. We'll go ahead and get rolling. So we'll start with our, our usual agenda. We're going to roll through some updates, some service test ticket up, and Oracle service requests. And then if there's anything you want to share and chat about, we'll share and chat about. Oh, question in the chat. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Thanks. All right. First up is Monica. Go ahead. Back to me. Thanks, Chris. Hey, everyone. This is Monica. I've got two cool, exciting updates to share with you all today. The first one, I'm very excited to welcome Vicki Walton to the State Board as our brand new full-time web accessibility specialist and tester. Vicki and I have known each other for almost a year now. We've had the opportunity to work together and collaborate on CATO, the Committee for Accessible Technology Oversight. And I'm thrilled to be working with Vicki in this new capacity moving forward. They will be joining the State Board officially in this new role early October. And Vicki, I'd like to hand it over to you now just to say hello to the group. All right, well, thank you, Monica. I am totally pumped and excited to be in this position. I, I love this work. I uh, feel honored to be a part of the SBCTC and working with all of you. And uh, <clears throat> I look forward to uh, meeting each one of you if the opportunity comes up. And uh, I'm truly, truly grateful to be working with Monica. I say that again, because uh, I think we can do a lot of great things together, so. Thanks, Vicki. And in Vicki's previous role, they've performed accessibility conformance testing a lot and have um, frequent, you know, conversations and meetings with external vendors. So that breadth of experience will definitely follow them into this new role and role and benefit the agency as well as our system. So yeah, sorry, I, I came from Columbia Basin College, by the way. And so and I have done much testing and uh, I started out in IT 
and then moved over to AT. So um, I've had a lot of experience in testing, document remediation, captioning, all the, all the whole gamut, but I'm truly excited about being in this uh, position of web accessibility specialist. Thanks, Vicki. So my next update is that um, Doug Heyman, who is the IT Accessibility Coordinator at Olympic College, he also happens to be um, the co-chair of Cato uh, for, for one more day or so. We're, we're gearing up to elect new co-chairs here soon, so we'll see how that shakes out. But um, uh, Doug has accepted a seat, a voting member position on the CTC Link Working Group. Um, and that's a new development in this last month. Um, and Doug will be representing accessibility concerns on that group as a voting member. He'll also be representing Cato's voice recommendations and interests. Um, so if the CTC Link Working Group um, in our post go live world now needs to have some collaboration or back and forth with Cato, Doug will help facilitate those conversations moving forward along with me. And I just wanted to let everyone know of that update so you are aware of the kind of the larger bird's eye view landscape of CTC link and accessibility and how those pieces are fitting together. Um, and Chris, I think that's it for me now. So I'll hand it back to you. This is Christopher Soren again, application smart manager. So October is a big month. We got a lot of updates coming in October. We've got uh, CS image 26. Uh, we've got HCM image 43. And we got finance image 41, as well as an HCX update. So the uh, image overview documents, IOVDs, uh, there will be an accessibility IOVD to go along with all those images, letting you know the uh, accessibility updates uh, that are that are coming with those. And so we'll get those published when uh, when we go to launch the image and launch all the documentation along with it. The HCX update. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide for that. So we're going up to version 22.2.0. And from the previous version to this version, so we're, we're jumping a uh, few versions. This is all of the accessibility updates um, in the release notes for, for from, from the vendor. So you can see here, there's a nice list. So some of the things, there's certainly um, some great updates coming in with this, um, other updates in addition to these accessibility updates. And the, and we'll, we'll be, um, posting some information with an accessibility IOVD for this one as well. Now, there was some noted uh, accessibility issues from December 2021. We got a video of them. Um, and so some of, the, some of those still remain as open tickets with the vendor that we're still continuing to work through. Um, so some stuff's been fixed, but some stuff we're still working with the vendor on, on getting those updates and, and getting those, those fixes resolved. But uh, we know about them, we're, we're working on them. So is there um, also, uh, so this uh, this HCX update is gonna be coming in October um, alongside the CS image. Uh, we're currently testing it in, in our, uh, we're doing, it's called SIT testing, uh, system integration testing. Uh, so we've, we're working out, uh, we've got it installed and, we're, and we're, we're going through a bunch of test scripts and making sure everything is working correctly. And then we'll be, um, making it available uh, in another environment to Cato uh, to, so they can run through uh, some accessibility testing. And that'll be in uh, early October um, with the production launch of it coming in mid-October. So is there any questions around the HCX update? Oh, I see some in chat. Oh, that was just my comment. Thank you, okay. Doug. <laughs> and just to make sure that everyone on the call under knows what HCX is and what we're talking about, because I know different people attend these meetings based on their schedule and availability. So um, HCX is um, not the same thing as CTC Link. It's a different product um, that's developed by a different vendor. 
And it's a series of web pages that users like students can interact with um, or on an app on their phone. And it provides similar functions and tasks to, the, to what students might be able to do inside CTC Link. Um, so that's the difference there. And it's just, I think it's really important for us to remember that they're two different products developed by two different vendors. So those are two different relationships that the state board is managing. Great points, thanks, Monica. All right, we'll keep rolling. So some updates on the Oracle Service Desk tickets we got open. So. The financial travel authorizations uh, got up. We originally got a PRP, didn't fix it. We got an updated one, and it does fix it. <laughs> so um, the fix is in Finance Image 42, and so it has dependent objects from Finance Image 41. And so we'll be working on implementing this uh, these this bug fix uh, once we get Image 41 applied. Um, so, and that one's coming in, in October. And then, so we'll, we'll, we'll get that one rolling after we get 41 applied. And then the HCM absence request page reloads. So it, it doesn't announce the reload like it should um, when, you, when you modify one of the fields on the page. And so uh, they're targeting, the Oracle's targeting a fix for uh, HCM image 44. So they're currently working on it and that's, We'll see if they meet that target, hopefully. <laughs> um, and we continue to work on all the other open tickets. Okay. Oh, and what HCM are we currently on? We're going to 43 in October. Um, and we're currently on 40, I believe, 41. Thanks. Yeah. And the rest of the current statuses are at the end of the slide deck. So this is just a listing of things that have changed since we, uh, since last month when we had the last forum, but we still continue to, to work on the other ones. And chat with Oracle about those. So feel free to uh, submit your ideas. Monica and I get notified when you submit them and get them added onto the agenda and answer any questions that you have. Reminder, we got the uh, CTC Link Accessibility webpage with a link there where we post those accessibility image overview documents or IOVDs, as well as fun glossary terms. There's lots of acronyms. I'm sure you all know what VPAT is, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty common one in this forum. And then um, our next open forum will be Tuesday, October 11th. Um, same Zoom link, same time, 11 to noon. Um, so Chris and I have shared what the content that we had prepared for this month. Um, I'm curious if as people have been listening and digesting, are there any questions or comments from our audience at this time? Do you need us to go back and re-clarify anything around HCX or the couple of updates from CTC Link and HCM pillar? So far, silence, and that's okay. Um, I hope that means that people are following along and understanding the information we're providing. Um, I suspect that 
at our next meeting in October, we'll have more information around HDX as well, because at that point, it will be going through some accessibility review and testing either by Cato members and or Vicky as well. So that'll be um, good for us to talk about next month. Monica, this is Vicki. Yes. I have a question. Um, are you getting a lot of feedback from students and uh, other staff and faculty as far as what they're catching for uh, accessibility issues? Um, yes and no. We recently did receive a ticket submitted by email from one of our colleges regarding a student using assistive technology who was having trouble adding and dropping classes using HCX mobile. Um, and that issue has to do with the way the add class or drop class button is has been designed by High Points developers. Josh Jiha, who's on the call here today, explained a little bit more in detail why that's an issue and why that's a user experience problem. And he, so the state board has documented that directly with High Point, the vendor, and we are waiting for more back and forth with them. So that was information submitted to us by a college within the last couple of weeks. It also mirrors some of the um, accessibility concerns that were um, documented in December of 2021 by Cato. Um, but between then and now, we also haven't updated or changed the version of HCX that we're using. And so the, the hope and goal is that as we move into using the you know, most current version or a more current version, that those accessibility issues are going to become addressed. Um, we do know that right now that particular add class or drop class issue still needs to be addressed by the vendor, um, and that's something that the agency is monitoring. Josh, do you feel like I adequately explained that? Yeah, that was perfect. Thanks. I will say, Vicki, that's a really great question, and we encourage our colleges to to communicate with us and let us know when they're experiencing what appears to be an accessibility barrier issue either with CTC link or HCX. Um, staff here at the state board are, you know, including Chris's team and, and then and you moving forward, doing monitoring and testing to the best of our, you know, abilities to catch things and communicate those things with our stakeholders and the vendor. Um, and there's so much in these, in these applications as we know. So we do really encourage our colleges and our stakeholders to communicate with us just like this college did. Um, it allows us to review the information, attempt to replicate it, and then document that issue with the vendor. Chris, would you agree with what I've said there? Yep. Yeah, we, we proactively you know, are looking at all the new accessibility related bug fixes that are coming in with all the images um, and, and checking those out and trying to get as much information we can. Oftentimes Oracle doesn't give us much information, so we ask for more. Um, but then we also welcome all, all tickets and reports of anything people are seeing. Uh, and we do have information for the colleges to follow along regarding how to submit an accessibility ticket or ticket in general related to CTC Link. That information is on our CTC Link accessibility page. And there are two ways you can submit that information using SolarWinds or if SolarWinds um, is not an option due to our known accessibility issues with that program, we now have um, an email alternative that folks can use. And, uh, that email goes directly to Chris's team for review. 
And that was something we put into place over the last few months to try to just make it a little bit easier for people to get the information to us in a uh, organized way. Thanks for that question, Vicki. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay, well, um, I wanna thank everyone again for being here today. It's a little bit of a smaller group. So hopefully when folks are back on campus in October, we'll see a larger crowd. Um, I'll continue to send out those reminders. As always, if you have questions or comments after today, you can uh, use the submission form on our site or you can email us as well, that's fine. Um, and we'll see you back here next month. And welcome again to Vicki Walton. Thank you, Monica. Thanks, you two. Oh, thanks, Paul, for being here. Hey, cool stuff. <laughs>